Hey everybody, my game 595 back with you again with another how to PC video. Today I'm bringing to you the Acer 700G all in one desktop PC. I'm going to show you how to open the case, install more RAM, and reclose the case properly. This PC comes equipped with 4 gigs of RAM. The motherboard on it is designed to capacitate up to 8. That's what we're going to install. So here we go. First step to opening the case on the all-in-one Acer is removing the foot. To remove this you need a safe set of prying tools, plastic preferably so you don't damage the case. You'll start down here at the bottom. There's a small gap right here. Then you work your way around the edge, trying gently to remove the plate. Once you have the tool inserted, very carefully slide it around the cover plate. And you should hear a series of snaps. This is fine, don't be concerned, it's just popping the snaps loose. Now that is off. As you can see here, there are two screws on each side. You remove those four screws and that re removes the foot from the PC. four screws lift the, lift the leg from the bottom and slide down now we have three screws at the base of the black cover this is on the back at the bottom just below the speakers one two three All right, now that those screws are out, something you should do to make the job a little easier and less likely to break your optical drive, take a second to plug it back up, boot the computer, eject your drive here, and then shut your PC back down. The reason you don't do this prior to the first couple of steps is to reduce the risk of breaking this. This is a slim tray and on this particular PC it's very 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 fragile. This is a very fragile drive. They didn't focus much on quality with this. So let's eject this and then you'll leave it don't don't accidentally lock it back but just push it to it about you know finger width. Because what happens is when you open this case, there are slide latches under the back. So when you lift this up, it has to go this way, and this has to give it its space. And then from the inside, which I think is another design flaw, that's when you remove your optical retainer screw. Every laptop build that I've ever worked on, the screw is accessible from the outside. It is not on this model. So we'll proceed to removing the back cover. I start on the back left corner, take the first pry tool, and I slide it in where the first screw hole is.
And from there, you'll take a second tool, work them together. From that point, once the bottom's relieved, you just do the same as you did with the cover plate. You just work your way around. Sli uh, sliding it as you go. Just relieving the snaps. Okay, that end's done. The end with your side ports on this model tends to be a little bit trickier. So you might have to work at that, but just take your time. It doesn't it shouldn't require a whole lot of force, so don't overdo it. All right. Now, as I said earlier, with the disk drive ejected, you want to leave it out enough to where you can raise this up because you cannot slide it over you open it up, you come in here, you're going to remove this screw retaining the disk drive. As you can see, now that we are inside the PC, static electricity is an issue. So I have my anti-static wristband, as I recommend always. And here I'm going to find a good place to clip it onto the frame to where it's not in your work area. Now I'll proceed with removing this screw. The optical drive here, this is the retainer screw. It's pretty easy to determine, even if you've never done something like this. But this one comes out. And another design thing they did here, there's not an actual SATA dock mounted to the inside. It's just the cables. So you'll have to be careful when removing these. Just wiggle them out side to side without breaking them. Don't pull on the wire. The power side of it's kind of small. Now I've removed the wires and the retainer screw. You slide it out of these holding clips with the back cover in hand. Leaving the cover in place as best you can, sliding the disk drive out through the cover. Now both pieces are free. Again, I'm not too happy with that design. 
but it is what it is. This is your hard drive. This is the fan. This is your heat sink leading into the processor. The CPU on this is soldered to the board. It cannot be changed. This, disregard this, it's not covering any crucial bits. It's just a reinforcement to support the weight of the screen on the leg. But this here is what you will be uncovering next. All the screws to open up this section are indicated with a little arrow. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten total, and this comes off freely. Now those ten screws are removed. You're going to pay attention to your ports on the side here. That's what you're going to have to maneuver them around. Otherwise, it comes off pretty easy. Okay. Set that aside. Now you've exposed the motherboard. The cover plate houses the motherboard and all the primary components. All your connections for the hard drive and the optical bay. Here's the CPU in this model. Here's your Wi-Fi card. Adapter, rather. Backup battery. And here's the pre-installed 4 gig RAM. And this is just like any other RAM. Pull your tabs over. RAM card comes up and out. This is a 4 gigabyte. I removed it to show you what the bay looks like. There's an upper and a lower. What you have to do before you upgrade your RAM is always verify what type of RAM you already have or what the motherboard is compatible with if you want to replace both. So what I did was I previously opened this computer up and removed that RAM and determined that this computer comes with it's a PC3L12800S. That is the identifier that you'll use when shopping for your new RAM. This particular model is a Samsung. So now I'm going to add this new RAM into the bay. It snaps into position. I always like to give it a slight lift with my fingernail to make sure it isn't loose. We're good to go. Now at this point you'll just reverse the process and close everything back. this process you'll take an optical drive we're going to slide it through the back cover into the space it's, it may or may not latch plug your SATA cables back in Tighten down your retainer screw for the optical drive. Don't overdo it. Double check your wire. Everything's good. Remove the static clamp. 
I'm going to lay this down. Make sure everything's working good there. And this is just a reversal process. Same order in which they came unsnapped, I'd recommend to snap them back in that order. Once you have that snap, close your optical drive, double check the whole unit, make sure everything's right. All right, at this point, you're going to reinstall the three small black screws at the base of the PC. Now we reinstall the foot. Set that back in place. We reset all four screws. All four screws are now in place. Replace the cover bracket, cover plate. Make sure it's snapped in place. Everything's back together. Stand is on securely, disk drive is in. Now we'll go hook it back up and we make the streams louder.